Miss Mary Jane will have our story time. Do I have any children that are going to come up front? true story that happened around Christmas and the year was 1776. Does that number ring any bells for you all? What? 1776 is when the revolution started, wasn't it? Very good. Now, a story I'm going to tell you about is George Washington. We know who George Washington was? Okay, good. Father of our country, he was the first general of all the troops of the Continental Army. And, you know, being in the Army back in those days was a lot different than it is now. When you were in the Army then, if you wanted a uniform, you had to make one up for yourself. They didn't supply it. And if you wanted boots on your feet, you had to supply those too. Sometimes you had to supply the guns and, and stuff. So being in the Army wasn't real easy. And George Washington <coughs> had been assigned the general over all the troops. And they were called militia at that time because they were men that, from the surrounding areas that came to help fight for the freedom of Amer the American colonists from Great Britain. Okay, so now we're talking winter time, around Christmas time. And General Washington and his militia had been chased out of New, Jer uh, New York, they'd been chased out of New Jersey, and they crossed the river, Delaware River, into Pennsylvania and it was cold and he was very worried about the troops because they needed an area where they could settle down that would have wood so they could build shelters. So not only did they have to endure the weather but they had to build themselves some huts so they'd have a place of to shelter themselves from the cold weather. So life was rough, rough for those guys. And you know, some of them on their enlistment was almost up. They were due to go home because they only signed up for a year. And so the morale was kind of down. Morale, meaning they were very discouraged. But General Washington wanted to encourage the men. Now, General Washington believed in God, and he prayed, and he sacrificed a lot for the cause. In fact, one, man, one day a man came home from his wife, and he said, you know what, wife? General Washington is going to win this war for us. And his wife said, well, why do you say that? And he goes, because I was just walking through the, 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 the woods, and there I saw the general on his knees praying for victory. Amen. Now, there's a famous picture of that. Um, it's called the general on his knees. Or they didn't have cameras back in those days, so we have to depend on pictures. But we can pass those around. I have another one. Hopefully you all can see. It's a very famous picture. So anyway. Okay, so he prayed. But now, remember I said that the troops had a low morale? They were very discouraged. And, and some of them were thinking, well, their enlistment is almost over. So General Washington had to come up with an idea that would make a difference. And he devised a plan with the Lord's help. 
he was going to cross the Delaware River in the middle of winter, and it was on December 25th, 1776. He crossed the Delaware River. There were three groups of them going to make this crossing, but only one actually was successful in crossing because they had to bring their horses and their cannons and, and everything across this river. And you know, it just wasn't a river. It had chunks of ice in it. And it was quite an idea doing this crossing. And I mean, it got into the nighttime of making this crossing. And it was snowing, kind of a sleety snow, and it was so bitter cold. But actually, that kind of helped them because it was so nasty that the enemy wasn't really paying attention. When he got everybody over to the other side, well, one third of the group, about 2,400 men got over to the other side. They had to march through the snow to the city of Trenton. There, there was a garrison of Hessian soldiers. Now, Hessian soldiers, what is that? There's a bunch of German soldiers that were being paid to fight by the English, and were being paid by the English to fight against the Americans. So they were stationed in the city of Trenton. They had fireplaces and food and everything. And they just had a Christmas celebration, probably. You know, sometimes when men celebrate like that, they're, not only it's eating, but they also do a little bit of drinking. And when I grew up, I remember in my history book of them showing pictures of those Haitian soldiers kind of imbibed. They'd been drinking alcohol. So when Washington and his soldiers marched onto the city of Trenton, he surprised them. They weren't expecting it. And he hit them hard. And you know, of all those men, there was maybe 60 of them wounded. Uh, like 900, 900 of them were taken prisoners, and a couple died. But Washington's men, hardly anybody died. And you know, James Madison, who became president later, he was actually wounded in that, that battle. But anyway, he took Trent, and it certainly lifted the spirits of those patriots. But you know, I think God had a lot to do with this. Amen. Because the man that was commanding the Trenton soldiers, the Haitian commander, his name was Colonel Rome. He was shot in the battle. And when they found him dead, they looked in his coat and you know what was in his coat? There was a dispatch that he had not opened. A dispatch. It was a letter from a loyalist that told him to beware that the Americans were planning an attack. But the, the colonel hadn't opened the letter. It was there in his pocket. I think, I think God had something to do with that. Amen. But you know, Amen. that reminds me of something else that we don't often open, and we should. We should open our Bibles and read them. Because we don't want to be accused of not reading the letter from God, from God's Word. We need to read our Bibles. And like Washington, Pray and talk to him and ask for his guidance. So it's important. Amen. And God will bless us for doing that too. Amen. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you give us. Lord, we thank you for the care and the love that you have for all of us. Amen. Even if we're not good, and maybe we're a little naughty. The Lord loves us anyway. And Lord, 
we ask your guidance that you will help us to understand you and understand the love that you have for us. We ask your blessing, Lord, that you will guide us and care for us, and especially these young people, that you will be an important part of their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.